Hey scientists, I'm excited about doing another week of science with you. We're starting our last unit of the year today. Before we start, I wanna explain something to you real quick. The packet that you should have gotten in the mail has some really great science activities in it for you to do, but they're all about plants and soil this time, not space. That's because most schools in Union County saved the plant unit for last, but our school kind of switched things around a little bit. So if you have internet access and a device to use so you can see these lessons on uh, that your teacher posts, I want you to do those first since this is the new information for you. It's information you haven't learned yet, so I'd rather you spend your time on the new stuff. But if it's hard for you to get on the internet, the packet is a great practice to help you remember all that smart stuff about plants and soil. And if you're just bored and you wanna keep your brain sharp, by all means, do both. So let's get started on our last unit. This is called Earth Science. Earth science focuses on what our Earth is made out of, the landforms on Earth, bodies of water, weather, and where the Earth is in space. It also includes how the Earth connects with the sun, the moon, and other planets. You learned a lot about weather in second grade during the Earth science unit. So in third grade, we're going to spend a few weeks learning about the Earth in space, and then a couple weeks learning about landforms and bodies of water. Next year in fourth grade, you'll dig into rocks and minerals. Now, before we can start, we totally have to take time for a space joke. I have some super cheesy space jokes and you get to suffer through listening to them throughout this part of our unit. So here's the first one. What is an astronaut's favorite key on the computer keyboard? I'm gonna give you five seconds, or you can pause this video if you wanna think about it. Five. Okay, you ready? It's the space bar, duh. Cheesy, huh? All right, the first thing I want you to know about the Earth is that it's part of what we call a solar system. The word part sol, S-O-L, sol in some languages, including in Spanish, means sun. So anything that has to do with solar has to do with the sun. If you remember from second grade, the sun is actually a star and it's the only star in our solar system. If you see any other stars in the sky at night, they're outside of our solar system. We don't usually see those other stars in the daytime because our own star, the sun, is so much closer that it looks really bright and makes it pretty much impossible to see the other ones until the sky is dark. Our solar system also includes eight regular planets, including Earth, as well as a whole bunch of moons and some other things like asteroids. I want you to watch this short video showing some examples of things that help you understand the size of each planet in relation to the other planets around it. Hey scientists. So this is just a way of showing you a small model of the solar system. We can't exactly bring real planets into our homes or into our classroom. And it's really hard to imagine the different sizes of the planets and especially compared to the sun and how far apart they are. So scientists will often make a model which just kind of represents the size of something. And this is a way to show you if we could make a planet the size of something like a little object that we might have in our homes, how big some of the other objects would be compared to it. So just to start our brains thinking, <clears throat> I have a small model here of the Earth. And if you look at my pencil tip, we live right about there. And if, if any of you have ever driven to the beach or maybe down to Florida, this little part here is Florida, you know it's a pretty long car ride. 
And just look at how tiny that distance actually is compared to the entire Earth, okay? So now let's look at how big the Earth is compared to the size of some of the other planets. I have across the bottom of my paper here all eight of the planet names, and I've found some things around my house that can represent the size of each planet in a much smaller scale so we can see them. This is going to represent Mercury. Now, if you look at that, it's actually a straight pin like someone might use for sewing. And we are only looking at the little red dot at the top. That's called a pinhead. So that little pinhead, if that's the size of Mercury, then this would be the size of Venus. That's actually a pepper kernel, a little black pepper kernel. So if that's the size of Mercury, that would be about the size of Venus. Earth is very similar to the size of Venus. So we have another one of those. And Mars is very similar to the size of Mercury. So we will add another little pinhead out there. Okay. If those are the sizes of those four planets, Jupiter would actually be the size of a ping pong ball. Look at how enormous Jupiter is compared to the size of our own planet. And then think back about just how big our planet is and how long it would take to go all the way around our planet. Jupiter is huge. Saturn is also pretty large, not quite as big as Jupiter. That's a marble. And then the last two planets are similar in size. And for those, I have tiny beams for Uranus and Neptune. So those are definitely bigger than the Earth, but of course not as big as Saturn and Jupiter. Hopefully that helps you see about the sizes of the planets compared to each other. All right, now let's look at one other video that will help you start to understand how close and far apart certain planets are from each other and from the sun. All right, I am standing here in an empty parking lot in an attempt to show you something that we would normally do together in our school parking lot as a class. And this is a little weird to try to do by myself instead of with all of you, but I'm gonna do my best because I want you to understand just how far apart different planets are from each other. So we're gonna pretend we can take the entire solar system and scrunch it down into this parking lot where I'm standing. And if we did, I'm going to show you how far apart different things would be. Okay. So if we could squish our whole solar system into this parking lot, there's our sun. It would be like Mercury was one step away from the sun. Venus would be two steps away from the sun. Earth would actually only be two and a half steps from the sun. So even though the Earth is actually really far away from Venus, when you compare it to all the other planets, we're actually fairly close. And then that's like saying Mars would be four steps from the sun. So if you could shrink the whole solar system into this parking lot, that's what the four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, that's how far apart they would be from each other and from the sun. If that's four steps, we now need to go to Jupiter, which is actually 13 steps from the sun. So let's start at four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And there's Jupiter. So notice how far the sun appears now and how far apart Jupiter and Mars are from each other compared to the other one definitely a huge amount of space. All right, this is 13. Saturn is at 24 steps. So here we go. 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And there's Saturn, 24 steps away from the sun in our model here. The sun looks really far away. The next planet, Uranus, would then be 49 steps from the sun. So let's go. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. And there is Uranus. Take a look at the distance back to the sun from here. All right, that leaves one planet, Neptune. If Uranus is 49 steps from the sun, then Neptune would be 76. So here we go, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. And there's Neptune. Let's look back at our sun. Can you see it? Can you see the little yellow blob? Not very well. If we could shrink our whole solar system into this parking lot, the first four planets would be pretty close together, close to the sun, a big space to Jupiter, bigger space to Saturn, bigger space to Uranus, and Neptune, way out here. Now do you understand why it's so cold and so far? All right, time for another joke, yay! What is the best way to prepare for a space party? I'm gonna give you five seconds. Or you can pause the video if you want to think. All right, you ready? You have to plan it. Get it? Plan it. Plan the party. Plan it. Okay, back to the lesson. A lot of people draw the solar system like this. They put the sun on one side and line up all the planets in order next to it. This is a great way to see them all at the same time and to learn the order of the planets based on which ones are closest to the sun. Notice that we are the third planet away from the sun. So there's Earth right there, out of eight planets in all. I want you to understand though, that the planets don't actually all line up side by side like this in real space. Notice in the drawing that each one has a little line going around the sun. The sun doesn't move, but the planets go around it, and they each have their own little path that we call the orbit. Orbits are actually invisible, but again, artists often draw the lines in there to help us see them and understand better. In reality, planets are all moving at different speeds around the Earth, or I'm sorry, around the sun, and their paths are in different places. So they don't actually travel side by side like that. Mercury, for example, is closest to the sun. It doesn't take very long for it to get all the way around. Neptune, however, is really far from the sun. So it takes a very long time for it to go around the sun once. The planets are all in different places in their paths at any one time not in a straight line like that last drawing showed. My son and I made this video to try to help show you how the different planets move around the sun in their own orbits or paths. Remember, the orbit is the path that one thing takes around another. 
We can also use orbit as an action word, so we could say that the planets orbit around the sun. In this video, my son Jacob is acting like Mercury. He's orbiting around the tree, I mean sun. He's pretty close to it. I'm acting like Venus, so I'm a little bit further away from the tree. Notice that we start out right beside one another. Okay, so let's watch this. So we started together. Wow, it kind of looks like he's just leaving me in the dust. And he's back to his starting place. I'm not there yet. Still going, still going. All right, he has now gone around twice by the time I made it around the first time. So you can see that the planets that are closer to the sun have a shorter or a smaller orbit and they can get around faster. And you notice that we didn't stay side by side because I was in a bigger circle. It was taking longer to go around. Imagine how long it must take Neptune to get all the way around since it's much, much further away from the sun than the first two planets are. If we were at school right now, we would have all tried this together. So if you want to, you could definitely try to find some people at your house and see if maybe they can do this with you. You could put a, you could find a tree or a stick or a chair, put something out in the yard maybe where you have a little more space and you can practice orbiting around the sun. If you're Mercury, orbit really close to the sun. See if you can get some family members to act like some of the other planets and they would move much further away, like in a big circle. Don't get too dizzy though. Just pause the video if you wanna go try it right now. All right, I hope all this new information is making sense to you. I wish we could be doing it together in class, but at least we're still kind of learning together in one way. Your teacher has posted several other links for you today for science. So if you have some time, go check them out. There are two YouTube videos that help show the size of Earth compared to everything else in space. Seriously, guys, go check them out. One of those is really cool. Students usually like it a lot. There's also a link to some directions for a project you can do at home. Should be something you would probably be able to make at home with some things you already have and just as a way to help you remember the planets in our solar system. If you have any questions at all, you can certainly ask your teacher or please send me an email. I put my email address right there on that slide so you can see it. And you know, even if you don't have any questions, you can still send me an email. I would love to hear from you. All right, I'll see you Friday. Bye.